The Crucible was first performed in 1952. During the 1950s, a wave of anti-communist witch hunts swept through all areas of American society, and Miller chose to expose the horror of such investigations by retelling the story of the infamous Salem witch trials in Massachusetts in 1692. The Crucible. He bid me come and tell you, Reverend, sir, that he cannot discover no medicine for it in his books. Then he must search on. Please, sir, he have been searching his books since he left you, sir. But he bid me tell you, you might look to unnatural things for the cause of no, it. No, no. There be no unnatural causes here. Tell him I've, I've sent for the Reverend Hale of Beverly, and Mr. Hale will surely confirm that. Let him look to medicine and put out all thought of unnatural causes here. There be none. I sir. He bid me tell you. Speak nothing of it in the village, Susanna. Go directly home and speak nothing of her natural course. I, sir, I pray for her. God, God, dear. Father, which... Uncle, mm -hmm. the rumor of witchcraft is all about. I think you'd best go down and deny it yourself. The parlor's packed with people, sir. I'll sit with her. And what shall I say to them? <laughs> that my daughter and my niece I discovered... Dancing like heathen in the forest? Uncle, we did dance. Let you tell them I confessed it, and I'll be whipped if I must be. But they're speaking of witchcraft. Betty's not witched. Abigail, I cannot go before the congregation when I know you have not opened with me. What did you do with her in the forest? We did dance, Uncle. And when you leaped out of the bush so suddenly, Betty was frightened, and then she fainted. And there's the whole of it. We never conjured spirits. Then why can she not move herself since midnight? This child is desperate. It must come out. My enemies will bring it out. Let me know what you have done there. Abigail, do you understand that I have many enemies? I have heard of it, Uncle. There is a faction that's sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand that? I think so, sir. How then, in the midst of such disruption, my own household is discovered to be the very center of some obscene practice. Abominations are done in the forest. It was sport, Uncle. You call this sport... Abigail, if you know something that may help the doctor, for God's sake, tell it to me. I saw Tichaba waving her arms over the fire when I come on you. Why was she doing that? She always sings her Barbados songs and we dance. I cannot blink what I saw, Abigail, for my enemies would not blink it. I saw a dress lying in the grass. A dress? I, a dress. And I, I thought I saw... Someone running naked through the trees. No one was naked, you mistake. I <laughs> saw it! Now, tell me true, Abigail, and I pray you feel the weight of truth upon you. For now, my ministry is at stake. My ministry, and perhaps your cousin's life. Whatever abomination you have done, give me all of it now. For I dare not be taken unaware when I go down before them down there. There's nothing more. I swear it, Uncle. Oh. Oh, Abigail, I've fought here three long years to bend these stiff-necked people to me. Now, just now, when some good respect is rising for me in the parish, you compromise my very character. I've given you a home, child. I've put clothes upon your back. Now give me upright answer. Your name in the town, it is entirely white, is it not? Well, I'm sure it is, sir. <laughs> 
There be no blush about my name. Abigail, is there any other cause than that you've told me for your being discharged from Goody Proctor's service seven months back? I've heard it said, and uh, I tell you how I heard it, that she comes so rarely to the church this year, for she will not sit so close to something soiled. What signifies that remark? She hates me, Uncle. She must, for I would not be her slave. It's a bitter woman, a lying, cold, I'm sniveling kidding, woman, and I, I will not work I, for such a woman. I, my name is good in the village. I will not have it said my name is soiled. Goody Proctor is a gossiping liar. I, oh, why? Goody Putnam, Mr. Putnam, come in. It is a marvel. It is surely a stroke of hell upon you. No, Goody Putnam, it is... How high did your Betty fly? No, 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 she never flew. Why, it's sure she did. Mr. Carlin saw her going over Ingersoll's barn and come down light as a bird, he says. Now, look you, Goody Putnam, she never flew. Look you, Anne. Betty's eyes is closed. Why, it's strange. Ours is open. Your roof is sick? I'd not call it sick. The devil's touch is heavier than sick. It's death, you know. It's death driving into them, forked and hoofed. Oh, oh, pray not. I, um, how does your Ruth ail? Well, she ails as she must. She never waked this morning, but her eyes open and she walks and hears not, sees not, and cannot eat. Her soul is taken, surely. They say you've sent for Reverend Hale of Beverly. A precaution only. He has much experience in all demonic arts, and I thought... He has indeed, and found a witch in Beverly last year, and let you remember that. Now, Goody Anne, they only thought that were a witch, and I am certain there be no element of witchcraft No witchcraft? Now, look you, Mr. Now, now, Thomas, I pray you, leap not to witchcraft. They will howl me out of Salem for such corruption in my house. Anne, tell Mr. Paris what you have done. Reverend Paris... I have laid seven babies unbaptized in the earth. And now, this year, my Ruth, my only... I saw her turning strange. A secret child she has become this year. And shrivels like a, a sucking mouth were pulling on her life, too. And so I thought to send her to your Tichiba. Tichiba? What, what may oh, Tichiba... Oh, knows how to speak to the dead, Mr. Paris. Oh, good Anne, it is a formidable sin to conjure up the dead. Oh, I take it on my soul. But who else may surely tell us what person murdered my babies? Oh, woman. They were murdered, Mr. Paris. And mark this proof. Mark it. Last night, my Ruth were ever so close to their little spirits. I know it, sir. For how else is she struck dumb now except some power of darkness would stop her mouth? <laughs> it is a marvelous sign, Mr. Paris. Don't you understand it, sir? There is a murdering witch among us, bound to keep herself in the dark. You cannot blink it more. Then you were conjuring spirits last night, Abigail. Not I, sir. Did you find Ruth? Oh, oh, my poor Betty. <sighs> Abigail, what proper payment for my charity? Now I am undone. You are not undone. And you take hold here. Wait for no one to charge you. Declare it yourself. Uh, but you strike out against the devil and the village will bless you for it. Come down. Speak to them. Pray with them. They're waiting for your word, mister. Surely you'll pray with them. I'll lead them in a psalm, but I... But let you say nothing of witchcraft yet. Oh. I, I will not discuss it. The cause is yet unknown. I've had enough contention since I came. I want no more. Now there's a merry one in Mercy Lewis. If they be questioning us, tell them we danced. I told my uncle as much already. Why? And what more? He knows Titch will come to Ruth's sisters to come out of the grave. And what more? He saw you make it. Oh, but what do we do? The whole country's dark in witchcraft. They'll be calling us witches, Abby. She means to tell me. Abby, we've got to tell. Witches are hanging error. A hanging like they done in Boston two years ago. We must tell the truth, Abby. You'll only be whipped for dancing and the other things. Oh, we'll be whipped. I never done none of it, Abby. I only love... Oh, you're a great one for looking, aren't you, Mary Warren? What a grand people encourage you to have. Now, Betty, dear, wake up now. It's Abigail. I'll beat you, Betty. My, you seem improving. I talked to your papa and I told him everything, so there's nothing to... Betty, go! My mama! Well, there's you, Betty. Your mama's dead and buried. I'll slide him all the left! I tell him everything. He knows now. He knows everything. You drank blood, Abby. You didn't tell him that. Betty, 
you never say that again. You will never. You did. You did. You drank a charm to kill John Proctor's wife. You drank a charm to kill Goody Proctor. <gasps> You, all of you, we danced, and Tituba Kanja ruled Putnam's dead sisters, and that is all. And mark this, let either of you breathe a word, or the edge of a word about the other things, and I will come to you in the black of some terrible night, and I will bring a pointy reckoning that will shudder you. You know I can do it. I saw Indians smash my dear parents' heads on the pillow next to mine, and I have seen some reddish work done at night. And I can make you wish you had never seen the sun go down. Now, Betty, sit up and stop this. What's got to happy? She's gonna die. It's a sin to conjure. I say shut it, Larry Warren. Shut it. How's this going home, Mr. Proctor? Be you foolish, Mary Warren. Be you deaf? I forbid you to leave the home, did I not? I, I only come to see the great doings in the world. I'll show you great doings on your ass one of these days. I'll get you home. My wife is waiting with your work. I I'd best be off, too. I have my Ruth to watch. Mrs. Putnam would want that. Good morning, Mr. Proctor. <laughs> God. I almost forgot how strong you are, John Proctor. What is mischief here? The town's mumbling witchcraft. Oh, Posh. We were dancing in the woods last night. My uncle leaped in on us. Betty took fright as all. Well. Oh, you're wicked yet, aren't you? <laughs> You'll be clapped in the stocks before you're twenty. You come five miles to see a silly girl fly. I know you better than that, John Proctor. I come to see what mischief your uncle's brewing now. Give me a word, John, a soft word. No, no, Abby, that's done with. Put it out of mind. John, I am waiting for you every night. Abby, I never give you hope to wait for me. I have something better than hope, I think. Abby, you put it out of mind. I'll not be coming for you more. You're surely spotting with me. You know me better. I know how you clutched my bag behind your house and sweated like a stallion whenever I come near. Or did I dream that? It's she put me out. You cannot pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out. And you loved me then, and you do now. Abby, that's a wild thing to say. A wild thing may say wild things. But not so wild, I think. I have seen you since she put me out. I have seen your nights. I have hardly stepped off my farm this seven months. I have a sense for heat, John. And yours has drawn me to my window. And I've seen you looking up, burning in your loneliness. Do you tell me you've never looked up at my window? I may have looked up. And you must. You are no wintry man. I know you, John. I know you. I cannot sleep for dreaming. I cannot dream, but I wake and walk about the house as though I'd find you coming through some door. Child. Child. You call me child. Abby. Abby, I may think of you softly from time to time, but I will cut off my hand before I'll ever reach for you again. Wipe it out of mine. We never touched Abby. I, but we did. I, but we did not. Oh, I marvel how such a strong man may let such a sickly wife You be. speak nothing of Elizabeth. She is blackening my name in the village. She is telling lies about me. She is a cold, sniveling woman, and you bent her. Huh. Let her turn Do you, you like look a... for whipping? Huh? I look for John Proctor. That took me from my sleep. And put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by all these Christian women and their covenanted men. And now you bid me tear the light out of my eyes. I will not. I cannot. You loved me, John Proctor. Abby. And whatever sin it is, you love me yet. John. Going up to Jesus. Jesus. What's she doing? Yeah. What ails you? Stop that wailing. Betty, what happened? What are you 
doing to her, Betty? The psalm, the psalm. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name. No, God forbid. Mercy, run to the doctor. Tell him what's happened here. Mark it for a sign. Mark it. That child is a notorious sign of witchcraft to foot goody nurse. A prodigious sign. Rebecca, Rebecca, nurse, go to her. We're lost. She suddenly cannot bear to hear the Lord's is name. Is she going to fly again? I hear she flies. There's hard sickness here, John Corey, so please to keep the quiet. And be quiet now. Sorry, sorry. Now, Betty. There, Betty. Child. There. What have you done? What do you make of it, Rebecca? Goody, nurse, will you go to my roof and see if you can wake her? I think she'll wake in time. Pray calm yourselves. I have 11 children and I'm 26 times a grandma. And I've seen them all through their silly seasons. And when it come on them, they will run the devil bowleg keeping up with their mischief. Aye, that's the truth of it, Rebecca. This is no silly season, Rebecca. My Ruth is bewildered, Rebecca. She cannot eat. Well, perhaps she's not hungered yet. Mr. Paris, I hope you're not decided to go in search of loose spirits. I've heard promise of that outside. A wide opinions running in the parish that the devil may be among us, and I would satisfy them that they are wrong. Then let you come out and call them wrong. Did you consult the wardens before you called this Reverend Hale to look for devils? He's not coming to look for devils. Then what's he coming for? There'll be children dying in the village, mister. I see none dying. This society will not be a bag to swing around your head, Mr. Parris. Pray calm yourself, John. Mr. Parris, I think you'd best send Reverend Hale back as soon as he come. But, 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 this will set us all to arguing again in the society. And we thought to have peace this year. I think we ought to rely on the doctor now and good prayer. Rebecca, the doctor's baffled. If so, he is, then let us go to God for the cause of it. There's prodigious danger in the seeking of loose spirits. And I fear it. I fear it. Let us rather blame ourselves. Oh, may we blame ourselves. I am one of nine sons. The Putnam seed have peopled this province. In it I have but one child left out of eight. And now she shrivels. Well, I cannot fathom that. But I must. You think it's God's work that you should never lose a child, nor grandchild either, and I bury all but one. There are wheels within wheels in this village, and fires within fires. When Reverend Hale comes, you will proceed to look for signs of witchcraft, Mr. Perez. You cannot command Mr. Perez. We vote by name in this society, not by acreage. I never heard you worried so in the society, Mr. Proctor. I do not think I saw you at Sabbath meetings since Snowflake. I have trouble enough without I come five miles to hear him preach only hellfire and bloody damnation. You take it to heart, Mr. Pettis. There are many other who stay away from church these days because you hardly ever mention God anymore. Why, that's a drastic charge. Oh, that's somewhat true. There are many that quail to bring their children. I do not preach for the children, Rebecca. It is not the children who are unmindful of their obligation toward this ministry. My contract provides I be supplied with all my firewood. I'm waiting since November for a stick, and even in November I had to show my frostbitten hands like some London beggar. Well, you are allowed six pounds a year to buy your wood, Mr. Paris. I regard that six pound as part of my salary. I'm paid little enough without I spend six pound on firewood. Sixty plus six for The firewood. salary is sixty-six pounds, Mr. Proctor. I'm not some preaching farmer with a book under my arm. I am a graduate of Harvard College. Aye, and well instructed in arithmetic. <laughs> you are the first minister ever to demand the deed to this house. The last meeting I were at, you spoke so long on deeds and mortgages, I thought it were an auction. I want a mark of confidence, is all. I am your third preacher in seven years. I do not wish to be put out like a cat whenever some majority feels a whim. You people seem not to comprehend that a minister is the Lord's man in the parish. A minister is not to be so lightly crossed and contradicted. Aye. There is either obedience or the church will burn like hell is burning. Can you speak one minute without we land in hell again? I am sick of hell. It is not for you to say what is good for you to hear. I may speak my heart, I think. What? Are we Quakers? We are not Quakers here yet, Mr. Proctor. And you may tell that to your followers. My followers? There is a party in this church. I am not blind. There is a faction and a party. Against you? Against him and all authority. Why, then I must find it and join it. Oh, oh, he does not mean that. He confessed it now. I mean it solemnly, Rebecca. I like not the smell of this authority. No, John. You cannot break charity with your minister. You're another kind, John. Clasp his hand. Make your peace. I have a crop to sow and lumber to drag home. A uh, moment, Mr. Proctor. What lumber is that you're dragging, if I may ask? My you? lumber, from out my forest by the riverside. 
Why, we are surely gone wild this year. What anarchy is this? That tract is in my bounds. It's in my bounds, In Mr. your bounds? Proctor. I bought that tract from Goody Nurse's husband five months ago. He had no right to sell it. It stands clear in my grandfather's will that all the land between... Your grandfather had a habit of willing land that never belonged to him, if I may say it plain. <laughs> Let's get your lumber home, John. I feel a sudden will to work coming you on. You load one oak of mine and you'll fight to drag it home. <laughs> and we'll win, too, Putnam, this fool and I. Come on, John Proctor. I'll have my men on you, Corey. I'll clap a writ on you. Pray you, someone take these books. Mr. Oh. Hale. Oh. oh, it's good to see you again. Oh, my, these books are heavy. Mm. They must be. They are weighted with authority. <laughs> well, you do come prepared. We shall need hard study if it comes to tracking down the old boy. You cannot be Rebecca Nurse. I am, sir. Do you know me? <laughs> it's strange how I know you. But I suppose you look as such a good soul should. We have all heard of your great charities in Beverly. Do you know this gentleman, Mr. Thomas Putnam, and his good wife, Anne? Putnam. Mr. Hale. <laughs> not expect such distinguished company, sir. Uh, it does not seem to help us today, Mr. Hale. We look to you to come to our house and save our child. Your child ails, too. Her soul, her soul seems flown away. She sleeps, and yet she walks. She cannot eat. She cannot eat. Do you men have afflicted children? No, no, these are farmers. Giles Corey and John Proctor. He don't believe in witches. I never spoke on witches one way or the other. Will you come, Giles? No, 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 John, I think not. I have some few queer questions of my own to ask this fella. I've heard you be a sensible man, Mr. Hale. I hope you'll leave some of it in Salem. Mr. Hale, will you look at my daughter, sir? She is here. She's tried to leap out the window. We discovered her this morning on the high road, waving her arms, as though she'd fly. Tries to fly. She cannot bear to hear the Lord's name, Mr. Hale. That's a sure sign of witchcraft afloat. No, no, no. Let me instruct you. We cannot look to superstition in this. The devil is precise. The marks of his presence are definite as stone, and I must tell you all that I shall not proceed unless you are prepared to believe me if I should find no bruise of hell upon her. It is agreed, sir. It is agreed. We will abide by your judgment. Good, then. Now, sir, what were your first warning of the strangeness? Why, sir, I discovered my daughter, Betty, Abigail, my niece, and ten or twelve of the other girls dancing in the forest last night. You permit dancing? No, no, it was secret. Mr. Paris Slave has knowledge of conjuring, sir. We cannot be sure of that, Goody Ann. I know it, sir. I sent my child. She should learn from Tichaba who murdered her sisters. Goody Ann. You sent a child to conjure up the dead? Let God blame me, not you, not you, Rebecca. I'll not have you judging me any more. Is it a natural work to lose seven children before they live oh, a day? Seven Shh. dead in childbirth. I have no fear now. We shall find the devil out if he has come among us, and I mean to crush him utterly if he has shown his face. Will it hurt the child, sir? I cannot tell. If she is truly in the devil's grip, we may have to rip and tear to get her free. Oh, I think I'll go, then. I'm too old for this. Why, Rebecca, we may open up the boil of all our troubles today. Let us hope for that. I go to God for you, sir. I hope you do not mean we go to Satan here. I wish I knew. I only wish I knew. Come, Mr. Hale. Uh, let's get on. Now, mark me... If the devil is in her, you will witness some frightful wonders in this room, so please do keep your wits about you. Mr. Putnam, stand close in case she flies. Now, Betty, dear, will you sit up? Can you hear me? I'm John Hale, minister of Beverly. I've come to help you, dear. Do you remember my two little girls in Beverly? Betty, answer Mr. Hale, Betty. Does someone afflict you, child? It need not be a woman, mind you, or a man. Perhaps some bird, invisible to others, comes to you. Perhaps a, a, a pig, or a mouse, or, or any beast at all. Is there some figure bids you fly? In nomine domine sabueth sui filique ite ad invernos. Mm. <sighs> Abigail. What sort of dancing were you doing with her in the forest? Why, common dancing is all. I think I ought to say that I... I saw a kettle in the grass oh, where they were dancing. That were only soup. What sort of soup were in this kettle, Why, Abigail? it were beans and lentils, I think. Mr. Paris, you did not notice, did you, any living thing in the kettle? Uh, 
a mouse, perhaps, or a spider, a, a frog. I do believe there was some movement oh, in the soup. That jumped in. We never put it in. What jumped in? Why, a, a very little frog jumped oh, frog, Abby. Abigail, it may be your cousin is dying. Did you call the devil last night? I never called him. Did you, Bob? Tituba. She oh. called the devil? Oh, praise be to God. I should like to speak with Tituba. Goody Anne, will you bring her up? Aye. How did she call him? I know not. She spoke about Bedos. Did you feel any strangeness when she called him? A sudden cold wind, perhaps? A trembling below the ground? I didn't see no devil. Betty, wake up. Betty, Betty. You Betty. cannot evade me, Abigail. Did your cousin drink any of the brew in that kettle? She never drank it. Did you drink it? No, sir. Did Tituba ask you to drink it? She tried, but I refused. Why are you concealing? Have you sold yourself to Lucifer? I never sold myself. I'm a good girl. I'm a proper girl. She, she made me do it. Tituba made Betty do it. Abby. She makes me drink blood. Oh, blood? My baby's blood. No, oh, no, chicken blood. I give she chicken blood. Woman, have you enlisted these children for the devil? No, sir, no. I don't talk with no devil. Why can she not wake? Are you silencing this child? I love me, Betty. You have sent your spirit out upon this child, have you not? Are you gathering souls for the devil? She sends her spirit on me in church. She makes me laugh at prayer. She have often laughed at prayer. She comes to me every night to go and drink blood. You oh. beg me to conjure. She beg me, make charm. Don't lie. She comes to me while I sleep. She's always making me dream corruption. Why you say that, Abby? Sometimes I wake and find myself standing in the open doorway and not a step. Stitch of my body. Oh, I always hear her laughing oh, in my no. sleep. I hear her singing her Barbados no. songs and tempting me. Oh, Mr. Raven, I never... I want you to wake this child. I have no power on this child, sir. You most certainly do, and you will free her from it now. When did you compact with the devil? I don't compact with no devil. You will confess yourself, or I will take you out and whip you to your death. <laughs> Tituba woman must be hanged. She must be taken and hanged. Oh, no, no. Don't hang, Tituba. No, I tell him I don't desire to work for him, sir. The devil? Then you saw him. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, uh. <laughs> now, Tichaba, I know that when we bind ourselves to hell, it is very hard to break with it. We are going to help you tear yourself free. Oh, Mr. Reverend, I do believe somebody else bewitching these children. Who? I don't know, sir. But the devil got him numerous witches. Does he? Tichaba, look into my eyes. Come, look into me. You would be a good Christian woman, would you not, Tichaba? Aye, sir, a good Christian woman. And you love these little children? Oh, yes, sir, I don't desire to have little children. And you children. love God, Tichaba? I love God with all my being. Bless him, bless him, eternal glory. Bless him, bless God, oh, bless the Lord. Tichaba, when the devil comes to you, does he ever come with another person? Perhaps another person in the village, someone you know? Who came with him? Sarah Good. Did you ever see Sarah Good with him? Or Osborne? Was it man or woman came with him? Man or woman? Was, was woman. What woman? Hmm? A woman, you said, what woman? It was black dark and I could not you see. You could see him, why could you not see her? Well, they was always talking. They was always running around and carrying on. You mean out of Salem? Salem witches? I believe so. Yes, sir. Did you, uh, you must have no fear to tell us who they are. Do you understand? We will protect you. The devil can never overcome a minister. You know that, do you not? Oh, I so oh, I do. Oh. You have confessed yourself to witchcraft, <laughs> and that speaks a wish to come to heaven's side, and we will bless you for it, Tichu. Oh, God bless you, Mr. Hale. You are God's instrument put in our hands to discover the devil's agent among us. You are selected, Tichu. You are chosen to help us cleanse this village. So speak utterly, Tichu. Turn your back on him and face God. Face God, Tichu, and God will protect you. Oh, God, protect Tichu. Who came to you with the devil? To Three, four, how many? They were far. They were far. Who? Who? Their names, their names. Oh, how many times he bid me kill you, Mr. Paris? Oh. Kill me? He say Mr. Paris must be killed. Mr. Paris no good in a man. Oh. Mr. Paris mean man and no gentleman. And he bid me rise out of me bed and cut your throat. Oh. But I tell him no. 
I don't hurt that man. I don't want to kill that man. But you stay, you work for me, Chichuba, and I'll make you free. I give you a pretty dress to wear and put you way up high in the air and you can fly back to Barbados. And I say, you lie, devil, you lie. And then he come one star me night to me and he say, look, I have what people belong to me. And I look and there was goody good. Oh, Sarah good. Hi, sir. <gasps> And Goody Husband. I knew it. Goody Husband worked midwife to me three times. My babies always shriveled in our hands. Very courage you must give us all their names. How can you bear to see this child Betty suffering? Look at her, Tichuba. Look at her God-given innocence. Her soul is so tender. We must protect her, Tichuba. For the devil is out and preying on her like a beast upon the flesh of a pure lamb. God will bless you for your help. I want to open myself. I want the light of God. I want the sweet love of Jesus. I danced for the devil. I saw him. He wrote in his book. I go back to Jesus. I kiss his hand. I saw Sarah Good with the devil. I saw Goody Osborne with the devil. I saw Bridget Bishop with the devil. I saw George Jacobs with the devil. I saw Goody Howe with the devil. She speaks from Betty's. Glory to God that is built in this. I saw Michael Bellows with the devil. I saw Goody Sibber with the devil. Marshal, I'll call the Marshal. I saw Alice Burroughs with the devil. I saw Goody Hopkins with the devil. I saw Goody Sibber with the devil. I saw Goody Sibber with the devil. Thank you, God. John, almost dark. We're planting, far out to the forest edge. Oh, you're done, then. All right, the farm is seated. The boys asleep? I will be soon. Yeah, I think we'll see green fields soon. It's warm as blood beneath the clods. Oh, that's well. If the crop is good, I'll buy George Jacob's heifer. How would that please you? Aye, it would. I mean to please you, Elizabeth. I know it, John. Mm. On Sunday... Let you come with me and we'll walk the farm together. I never see such a load of flowers on the earth. Massachusetts is a beauty in the spring. Aye, it is. I think you're sad again, are you? You come so late, I thought you'd gone to Salem this afternoon. Why, I have no business in Salem. Oh, you did speak of going earlier this I week. I thought better of it since. Mary Warren's there today. Why'd you let her? You heard me forbid her go to Salem anymore. I couldn't stop It her. is a fault. It is a fault, Elizabeth. You're the mistress of the house here, not Mary Warren. She frightened all my strength away. How may that mouse frighten you, Elizabeth? Oh, it you... is a mouse no more. I forbid her go. And she raises up her chin like the daughter of a prince and says to me, I must go to Salem, Goody Proctor. I am an official of the court. Court? What court? Why, it is a proper court they have now. They've sent four judges out of Boston, she says. What? Weighty magistrates of the general court. And at the head sits the deputy governor of the province. Why, she's mad. Oh, I would to God she were. There'll be 14 people in the jail now, she says. For... And they'll be tried, and the court have power to hang them too, she says. Oh, they'd never hang them. The deputy governor promised hanging if they'll not confess, John. The town's gone wild, I think. She speak of Abigail, and I thought she were a saint to hear her. Abigail brings the other girls into the court. Folks are brought before them, and if they scream and howl and fall to the floor, the person's clapped into jail for bewitching them. I think you must go to Salem, John. You must tell them it is a fraud. Aye, it is, it is, surely. Let you go to Ezekiel Sheva. He knows you well. And tell him what Abigail said to you last week in her uncle's house. She said it had not to do with witchcraft, did she? Aye, aye, she did, she did. God forbid you keep that from the court, John. I think they must be told. Aye, they must. They must. It is a wonder they do believe her. I would go to Salem now, John. Let you go tonight. I'll think on it. You cannot keep it, John. I know I cannot keep it. I say I will think on it. Good, then. Let you think on it. I am only wondering how I may prove what she told me, Elizabeth. I, if the girl's a saint now, I think it is not easy to prove she's fraud and the town gone so silly. She told it to me in, in a room alone. 
I have no proof for it. You were alone with For a moment alone, I... It's not as you... For a moment, I say. The others come in soon after. Do as you wish. Woman, I'll not have your suspicion any more. Then let you not earn it. You doubt me yet? John, if it were not Abigail that you must go to hurt, would you falter now? I think not. Now, look, you, Elizabeth... I see what I see, John. You will not judge me more, Elizabeth. Let you look to your own improvement before you go to judge your husband any more. I have forgot, Abigail. And I... Spare me. You forget nothing and forgive nothing. Learn, charity woman. Still an everlasting funeral march is round your heart. I cannot speak, but I am doubted. Every movement judged for life. You are not open with me. You saw her with me. You saw her with the crowd. You said I'll plead my honesty no more, Elizabeth. John, I am only... No more! I should have roared you down when first you told me your suspicion, but I wilted it like a Christian. I confessed. Confessed. Some dream I had must have mistaken you for God that day. But you're not. You're not, and let you remember it. Let you look sometimes for the goodness in me and judge me not. I do not judge you. The magistrate sits in your heart that judges you. I never thought you but a good man, John, only somewhat bewildered. Oh, Elizabeth, your justice would freeze beer. Maddie Warren! How are you going to say them when I forbid it? You mock me! I'll flip you if you dare leave this house again! They may not hide me. My insides are all shuddery. I'm in the proceedings all day, sir. And what are these proceedings here? When will you proceed to keep this house as you are paid nine pounds a year to do and my wife not wholly well? I made a gift for you today, Goody Proctor. I had to sit long hours in a chair. I passed the time with sewing. Here, this doll... Why, thank you, Mary. It's a fair puppet. We must all love each other now, could it, Proctor? Oh, indeed, we must. Mary, is it true? There'd be 14 women arrested? No, sir. There'd be 39 now. What? <laughs> She's weeping. Could the husband will hang? Hang? Hang, you say? The deputy governor will permit it? He must, but, but not Sarah Good. For Sarah Good confessed, you see. Confessed to what? That she, she sometimes makes a contact with Lucifer oh. and wrote her name in his black book I, with her blood and bound herself to Tom and Christians till God's thrown down and we must all worship her forevermore. But surely you know what a jabberer she is. Did you tell them that? Mr. Proctor, in open court, she nearly choked us all to death. How choked you? She sent her spirit out. Oh, Mary, Mary. She tried to kill me many times, Goody Proctor. Why, I never heard you mention that before. I never knew it before. I never knew anything before. When she come to the court, I say to myself, I must not accuse this woman, for she sleep in ditches and so very old and poor. But then, then she sit there, denying and denying, and I feel a misty coldness climbing up my back, and the skin on my skull begin to creep, and I feel a clamp on my neck, and I cannot breathe air, and then, then I hear a voice. A screaming voice, and it was my voice. And all at once, I remembered everything she'd done to me. Why? What did she do to you? So many times, Mr. Proctor. She'd come to this very door, big and bread and a cup of cider, and mark this, whenever I turned her away empty, she mumbled. Mumbled? She may mumble if she's hungry. But what does she mumble? You must remember, Goody Proctor, last month, a Monday, I think, she walked away, and I thought my Guts would burst for two days after. Do you remember it? Oh, I, I do. I think I And so, so I told that to Judge Hawthorne, and he asks her, Goody husband, says he, what curse do you mumble that this girl must fall sick after turning you away? And she replies, why, your excellency, no curse at all. I only say my commandments. I hope I may say my commandments, says she. And that's an upright answer. Aye, but then Judge Hawthorne says, recite for us your commandments. And of all the ten, she could not say a single one. She never knew no commandments. And they had her in a flat line. And so condemned her. Why, they must when she condemned herself. But the proof, the proof. Oh, I told you the proof. It's hard proof. Hard as rock, the judges said. You will not go to court again, Mary Warren. I must tell you, sir, I will be gone every day now. Uh, I am amazed that you do not see what weighty work we do. What work you do? It's strange work for a Christian girl to hang old women. I am an official of the court. They say... Official? The devil's loose in Salem, Mr. Proctor. We must discover where is hiding. Oh, oh, no. No. I saved a wife's life today. I am accused. Someone mentioned... Who accused me? I'm bound by law. I cannot tell it. 
I only hope, Mr. Proctor, you'll not be so sarcastical no more. Four judges and the king's deputy sat to dinner with us but an hour ago. I, I would have you speak civilly to me from this out. Go to bed. I'll not be ordered to bed no more, Mr. Proctor. I'm 18 and a woman, however single. Oh, do you wish to sit up? Then sit up. I wish to go to bed. Good night, then. Good night. The noose is up. There'll be no noose. Abigail wants me dead. I knew all week it would come to this. They dismissed it. You heard her say. What of tomorrow? She will cry me out until they take me. Sit you down. She wants me dead, John, you know. I say sit down. (gasps) Now, we must be wise, Elizabeth. Oh, indeed, indeed. Now, fear nothing. I'll find Ezekiel Cheever. I'll tell him Abigail said it were all sport. Oh, John, with so many in the jail, more than Cheever's help is needed now, I think. Would you... Favor me with this. Go to Abigail. What have I to say to Abigail? John, grant me this. You have a faulty understanding of young girls. There is a promise made in any bed. What promise? Spoke or silent, a promise is surely made. And she may dote on it now. I am sure she does. And thinks to kill me then to take my place. It is her dearest hope, John. I know it. There be a thousand names. Why does she call mine? She thinks to take my place, John. She cannot think it. John, have you ever shown her somewhat of contempt? She cannot pass you in the church, but you will blush. I may blush for my sin. I think she sees another meaning in that blush. And what see you? What see you, Elizabeth? I I think you'll be somewhat ashamed, for I am there and... She's so close. Oh, when will you know me, woman? Were I stone, I would have cracked for shame this seven month. Then go to her and tell her she's a whore. Whatever promise she may sense, break it, John, break it. Good, then I'll go. Oh, how unwilling. I will curse her hotter than the oldest cinder in hell. But pray, begrudge me not my anger. Your anger, I woman, only ask am you. I so base? Do you truly think me base? I never called you base. Then how do you charge me with such a promise? That promise a stallion gives a mare I gave that girl. And why do you anger with me when I bid you break? Because it speaks deceit, and I am honest. But I'll plead no more. I see now your spirit twists around the single error of my life, and I will never tear it free. You'll tear it free when you come to know that I will be your only wife or no wife at all. She has an arrow in you yet, John Proctor. You know it well. Yes. Good evening. Why, Mr. Hale. Good evening to you, sir. Come in, come in. We do not startle you, good old Proctor. Uh, no, 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 it's only that I, I heard no horse. And... I hope you're not off to bed yet. Oh, no, no, we're not used to visitors after dark, but you're welcome here. <sighs> Will you drink cider, Mr. Hale? No, it rebels my stomach. I have some further traveling here tonight. I will not keep you long, but I have some business with you. Business of the court? No, no, I... Come of my own, without the court's authority. Hear me. I know not if you are aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in the court. We know it, sir. Our Mary Warren told us we are entirely amazed. This is a strange time, mister. No man may longer doubt the powers of the dark are gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence now to deny it. You will agree, sir? I, I... I have no knowledge in that line. I... I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you will permit me. Why, we have no fear of questions. Good, then. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you were rarely in the church on Sabbath day. My wife was sick this winter. I surely did come when I could, and when I could not, I prayed in this house. Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir, it does. And it tells me that a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. I think sometimes that man dreams cathedrals, not clapboard meeting houses. Mm -hmm. And yet, mister, a Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children. Aye, boys. How comes it that only two are baptized? I... I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. 
I see no light of God in that man. I'll not concede. I it. must say it, Mr. Proctor. That is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore the light of God is in him. What's your suspicion, Mr. No, Hale? no, no, I have no I suspicion. I nailed the roof upon the church. I hung the door. Did you? That is a good sign, then. It may be. I have been too quick to bring the man to book, but you cannot think we ever desire the destruction of religion. There is a softness in your record, sir, a softness. I, I think maybe we have been too hard with Mr. Paris. I, I think so. But sure, we never loved the devil here. Do you know your commandments, Elizabeth? I surely do. There be no mark of blame upon my life. I am a covenanted Christian woman, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hay. And you, mister? I, I'm sure I do, sir. Let you repeat them, if you will. The commandments? Aye. <clears throat> thou shalt not kill. Aye. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, nor make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt not have any gods before me. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. You have said that twice, sir. Aye. <coughs> Adultery, John. Aye. <laughs> you see, sir, between the two of us, we know them all. <laughs> I think it'd be a small fault. Theology, sir, is a fortress. No crack in a fortress may be accounted small. There'll be no love for Satan in this house, mister. I pray it. I pray it dearly. Well, then I'll bid you good night. Mr. Hale, I do think you are suspecting me somewhat. Goody Proctor, I... I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him, John. What's that? Will you tell him? I... I... I have not witness and cannot prove it except my word be taken. But I know the children's sickness had not to do with witchcraft. Not to do? Mr. Paris discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled and took sick. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? I... Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft. She told me the day you came, sir. Why did you keep I this? never knew until tonight that the world has gone daft with this nonsense. Nonsense! Mister, I have myself examined Tichaba, Sarah Good, and numerous others that have confessed to dealing with the devil. They have confessed it. And why not? They must hang for denying it. There are them that will swear to anything before they'll hang. Have you never thought of that? I... I have, I have. Indeed. And you, would you testify to this in court? I had not reckoned with going into court. But if I must, I will. Do you falter here? I falter nothing, but I wondered if my story will be credited in such a court. I am no fool, mister. Proctor, let you be open with me now. I have a rumor that troubles me. It's said that you hold no belief that there may even be witches in the world. Is that true, sir? I know not what I have said. I may have said it. I have wondered if there be witches in the world, although I cannot believe they come among us now. Then you do not I have believe. no knowledge of it. The Bible speaks of witches, and I will not deny them. And you, woman? I, I cannot believe it. You cannot! Elizabeth, you bewilder him. I cannot believe the devil may own a woman's soul, Mr. Hale, when she keeps an upright way as I have. I am a good woman, I know it. And if you believe I may do only good work in the world and yet be secretly bound to Satan, then I must tell you, sir, I do not believe it. But, woman, you do believe that there are witches. If you think that I am one, then I say there are none. You surely do not fly against the gospel. The gospel... She believe in the gospel, every word. Question Abigail Williams about the gospel, she not myself. She do not mean to doubt the gospel, sir. You cannot think it. This is a Christian house, sir. A Christian house! God keep you both. <laughs> Let the third child be quickly baptized. And go you without fail each Sunday into Sabbath prayer. And keep a solemn, quiet way among you. John. Giles. Francis Nurse. What's the matter? They take my wife. And why, Rebecca? Rebecca's in the jail? I, she will come and take her in this wagon. We've only now come from the jail, and they've not even let us in to see them. But they've surely gone by it now, Mr. Hale. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Uh, Hale. And Giles' wife, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. Uh, How is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder, she's charged. Murder, yes. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. Oh, Lord. What? 
What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Believe me, Mr. Nurse, if your Rebecca be tainted, then nothing's left to stop the whole green world from burning. Let you rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I know it. You cannot mean she will be tried in court. Nurse, though our hearts break, we cannot flinch. These are new times. There is a misty plot afoot, so subtle we should be criminal to cling to old respects and ancient friendships. But I have seen too many frightful proofs of the court. The devil is alive in Salem, and we dare not quail to follow wherever the accusing finger points. How may such a woman murder children? Remember, until an hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful in heaven. Come in. Good evening, dear Proctor. Why, Mr. Cheever, good evening. Good evening, Arthur. Well, good evening, Mr. Head. Good evening. I hope you come not on business of the court. I do, Proctor. I, I am clerk of the court now, you know. Now, believe me, Proctor, how heavy be the law, all its tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant for your wife. Oh, oh, my wife, Mr. Hale. You said she were not charged. I know nothing of it. When was she charged, Mr. Cheever? I am given 16 warrant tonight, sir, and she is one. Who charged her? Well, Abigail Williams charged her. What <laughs> proof? What Mr. proof? Proctor, I have little time. The court bid me search your house, but I like not to search your house. So will you hand me any puppets that your wife may keep here? Puppets? I never kept no puppets, not since I were a girl. I spy a puppet on your mantle, Goody Proctor. Oh, that way. Mrs. Mary's. Would you please give it to me? There. Has the court discovered a text in puppets now? Do you keep any others like this in the house? No, nor this one either till tonight. What signifies a puppet? Why, a puppet. A puppet may signify... Now, woman, will you please to come with me? She will not. Fetch Mary Elizabeth. Yes, John. What signifies a puppet, Mr. Well, Cheever? They say it may signify that she... Why, this? This? What's there? Why, it is a needle. It is a needle stuck into the dark. What signifies a needle? Why, this go hard with her, Proctor. This, I, I had my doubts, Proctor. I had my doubts, but his calamity. You see, Mr. Hale, it is a needle. Why, what meaning has it? The girl, the Williams girl, Abigail Williams, sir, she sat down to dinner in Reverend Paris's house tonight, and without word nor warning, she falls to the floor like a struck beast, he says, and screamed a scream that a bull would weep to hear. And he goes to save her, and stuck two inches in the flesh of her belly, he draw a needle out. No. And demanding of her how she come to be so stabbed, she testified it for Goody Proctor's familiar spirit pushed it in. Why, her. she done it herself. I hope you're not taking this for proof, Mr. Hale. It is hard proof. I find here a puppet Goody Proctor keeps. I have found it, sir. And in the belly of the puppet, a needle is stuck. I'd never warranted to see such proof of hell. And I bid you obstruct me not here, for... Here, now. Mary Warren, how did this puppet come into my house? What puppet is that, sir? This puppet, this puppet here. Uh, I think... It is your I, puppet, I is it not? it's mine. And how it did is... it come into the house? Yeah, I made it in the cart, sir. I give it to Goody Proctor tonight. Mary Warren, a needle have been found inside this puppet. I meant no harm by it, sir. You stuck that needle in yourself. I believe I did, sir. I... What say you now, Mr. Hale? Child, you are certain this be your natural memory? May it be, perhaps, that someone conjured you even now to say Conjures this? me? Why, no, sir. I'm entirely myself. I, I think. Let you ask Susanna Walcott. She saw me sewing it in cut. Ask Abby. Abby sat beside me when I made Mary. it. Mary! You charge a cold and cruel murder on Abigail. Murder! I charge... Abigail was stabbed tonight. A needle was found stuck into her belly. She charges me? Aye. Why? The God is murder! She must be ripped out of the world! Give her, sir, ripped out of the world! Give her! Give me the warrant! Proctor, you dare not touch that warrant! Dare and I! I oh, could. Out with you! You have ripped the deputy governor's warrant, man! Damn the deputy governor! Out of my house! Get Proctor! Get ye gone with them! What a broken minister! Proctor, if she is innocent, if she is course... innocent! Why do you never wonder if Penn is be innocent or Abigail? Is the accuser always holy now? Were they born this morning as clean as God's fingers? I'll tell you what's walking Salem. Vengeance is walking Salem. We are what we always were in Salem, but now the little crazy children are jangling the keys of the kingdom and common vengeance writes the law. This warrant is vengeance. I'll not give my wife to vengeance. I'll go, John. You will not go. I have nine men outside. You cannot keep her. The law binds me, John. I cannot budge. Will you see her taken, Mr. Hale? Proctor... The court is just... Pontius Pilate! God will not let you wash your hands of this. John, I think I must go with them. Mary, there is bread enough for the morning. 
You will bake in the afternoon. Help Mr. Proctor as you were his daughter. You owe me that. And much more. John, when the children wake, speak nothing of witchcraft. I, I will bring you home. I will bring you soon. Oh, John, bring me soon. I will fall like an ocean on that court. Fear nothing, Elizabeth. I will fear nothing. I tell the children I have gone to visit someone sick. Don't chain her. Damn you, man! You will not chain her! Open them! I'll not have it! I will not have a chain! And yet silent, Minister. It is a fraud. You know it is a fraud. What keeps you, man? Mr. Proctor. Out of my sight. Charity, Proctor, charity. What I have heard in a favor, I will not fear to testify in court. God help me. I cannot judge her guilty or innocent. I know not. Only this consider. The world goes mad and it profit nothing. You should lay the cause to the vengeance of a little girl. You are a coward. Though you be ordained in God's own tears, you are a coward now. Proctor, I cannot think God be provoked so grandly by such a petty cause. The jails are packed. Our greatest judges sit in Salem now, and hangings promised man. We must look to cause proportionate. Was there murder done, perhaps, and never brought to light? Abomination. Some secret blasphemy that stinks to heaven. Think on cause, man. And let you believe it there is your only way. When such confusion strikes upon the world, I shall pray God open up our eyes. I never heard no murder done in Salem. Leave me, Francis, leave me. John, tell me, are we lost? Go home now, Giles. We'll speak on it tomorrow. Let you think on it. We'll come early, eh? Aye, aye. Go now, Giles, go. Good night, then. Come, friends. Mr. Proctor, very likely they let her come home once they're given proper evidence. You're coming to the court with me, Mary. You will tell it to the court. I cannot judge, Mary. You will Lord tell Abigail. the court how the puppet come here and who stuck the needle in. Did you kill me for saying that? I will charge lechery on you, Mr. Proctor. She's told you. I've known it, sir. She'll ruin you with it. I know she will. Good. Then her saintliness is done with. We will slide together into our pit. You will tell the court what you know. You will. My wife will never die for us. I will bring your guts into your mouth. But that goodness will not die for me. Make your peace with it. Now hell and heaven grapple on our backs and our old pretense is ripped away. Make your peace. Peace. It is a providence. And no great change. We are only what we always were. But naked now. I'm naked. And the wind, God's icy wind, will blow. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. There, Mr. Hale, and demand my speech. They'll be hanging my wife, Martha. How do you dare come roaring into this court? Are you gone daft, Corey? You're not a Boston judge yet, Hawthorne. You'll not call me daft. Show some respect for the deputy governor, Corey. 
Who is this man? Giles Corey, sir, and a more contentious... I am asked the question, Mr. Addison. I am old enough to answer it. My name is Corey, sir. Giles Corey. I have 600 acres and timber in addition. It is my wife. You'd be condemned to And how do you now. imagine to help her cause with such contemptuous riot? Now be gone. They'd be telling lies about Don't my wife, take sir. take it upon yourself to determine what this court shall believe and what it shall set aside. No, no, no. You don't know, Your Excellency. We mean no disrespect. Disrespect, in the court. indeed. It is disruption, mister. This is the highest court of the supreme no. government of this promise. Do you know it? Your Excellency... I only said she were reading books, sir. Books? And they come and what take books? her out of my house. It is my third wife, sir. I never had no wife that be so taken with books, and I thought to find the cause of it, you see. But it were no witch I blamed her for. I have broke charity with the woman. I have broke charity with her. <laughs> Excellency, he claims hard evidence for his wife's defense. I think in all justice... Then let him submit his evidence in proper affidavit. You are certainly aware of our procedure here, Mr. Hale. Clear this room. We are desperate, sir. We come here three days now and cannot be heard. Who is this man? Francis Nurse, Your Excellency. His wife's from Becker that were condemned this morning. I am amazed to find you in such uproar. I have only good report of your character. I think they must both be arrested in contempt, sir. Exactly, and in due time... Excellency, we have proof for your eyes. God forbid you shut them to it. The girls, sir. The girls are fraud, sir. We have proof of it, sir. They are all deceiving you. This is contempt, sir. Contempt. Please, Judge Hathor, do you know who I am, Mr. Nurse? I surely do, sir, and I think you must be a wise judge and to be what you are. do you know that near to 400 are in the jails from Marblehead to Linen upon my signature? I know and that 72 you... condemned to hang by that signature? Excellency, I never thought to say it to such a weighty judge, but you are deceived. Mary Warren. What are you about here? She would speak with the deputy governor. Who is this? John Proctor, sir. Elizabeth Proctor is my wife. But where this man, Your Excellency, this man is Mr. I think Hazel. you must hear the girl, Hazel. sir. She... What would you tell us, Mary Warren? She never saw no spirit, sir. Never saw no spirit. She has signed a deposition, no, sir. No, I accept no depositions. Tell me, Mr. Proctor... Have you given out this story in the village? We have not. They've come to overthrow the courts, sir. I pray you, Mr. Harris. Do you know, Mr. Proctor, that the entire contention of the state in these trials is that the voice of heaven is speaking through the children? I know that, sir. And you, Mary Warren? How came you to cry out people for sending their spirits against you? It were pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. It were pretense, you say, sir. Ah. And the other girls, Susanna Walcott and uh, the others, they are also pretending... Aye, sir. Indeed. Oh, Excellency, you surely cannot think to let so vile a lie be spread in his court. Indeed not, but it strike hard upon me that she will dare come here with such a tale. Now, Mr. Proctor, before I decide whether I shall hear you or not, it is my duty to tell you this. We burn a hot fire here. It melts down all concealment. I know that, let sir. Let me continue. I understand well a husband's tenderness may drive him to extravagance in defense of a wife. Are you certain in your conscience, mister, that your evidence is the truth? It is, and you will surely know it. And you thought to declare this revelation in the open court before the public? I thought I would, I, With your permission. Now, sir, what is your purpose in so doing? Why, I, I would free my wife, sir. There lurks nowhere in your heart, nor hidden in your spirit, any desire to undermine this court? Why, no, sir. I, uh, your Excellency. Mr. Cheever. I think it be my duty, sir. You'll not deny it, John. When we come to take his wife... He damned the court and ripped your warrant. He did that, Mr. Hale. Aye, you have aye, it. he did. Uh, it was a temper, sir. Aye. I knew not what I did. He plow on Sunday, plow sir. Plow on oh. Sunday? I think it'd be evidence, John. I am an official of the court. I cannot keep... I, I have once or twice plowed on Sunday. I, I have three children, sir, and until last year my land gave little... Your Honor, I cannot think you may judge the man on such I evidence. I judge nothing. I tell you straight, Mr. I have seen marvels in this court. I have seen people choked before my eyes by spirits. I have seen them stuck by pins and slashed by daggers. I have until this moment not the slightest reason to suspect that the children may be deceiving me. Do you understand my meaning? Excellency, does it not strike upon you that so many of these women have lived so long with such upright reputation? You read the gospel, Mr. Potter. I read the gospel. I think not. Or you should surely know that Cain were an upright man, and yet he did kill Abel. Aye, God tells us that. But who tells us Rebecca Nurse murdered seven babies by sending out her spirit on them? It is the children only, and this one, Mary Warren, will swear she'd lied to this. Yes. Hmm. 
Put hat on. Aye, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, <coughs> this morning your wife sent me a claim in which she states that she is pregnant. Oh, my wife pregnant? There be no sign of it. We have examined her body. If she says she is pregnant, then she must be. That woman will never lie, Mr. Danforth. She will not. Never, sir, never. We have thought it too convenient to be credited. However, if I should tell you now that I will let her be kept another month, and if she begin to show her natural signs, you shall have her living yet another year until she is delivered. What say you to that? Well, John. Come, man. You say your only purpose is to save your wife. Good, then she is saved at least a year, and a year is long. What say you, sir? It is done now. Will you drop this charge? I, uh, think I, I cannot. Then your purpose is somewhat larger. He's come to overthrow this court, Your Honor. Giles, Corey, and Francis, nurse, are my friends. Uh, Their wives are also accused. Sir, I am ready to hear your evidence. Now, what depositions do you have for us, Mr. Proctor? And I beg you be clear, open as the sky, and honest. Well, I am no lawyer, sir. So I'll... The pure in heart need no lawyers. Proceed as you will. Will you read this first, sir? It's a sort of testament... The people signing it declare their good opinion of Rebecca and my wife and Martha Corey. They are all land-holding farmers, members of the church. And, and, and if you'll notice, sir, they've known the women many years and never saw no sign they had dealings with the devil. How many names are here? Ninety-one, Your Excellency. These people should be summoned. Oh. For question, Mr. Danforth, I gave them all my word. No harm would come to them for signing this. This is a clear attack upon the court. Is every defense an attack upon the court? All innocent no one... Christian people are happy for the courts in Salem. These people are gloomy for it. And I think you will want to know from each and every one of them what discontents them it with you. It is not necessarily an attack, I think. Christians, then sir. I am sure, Mr. Nurse, they may have nothing to fear. Mr. Cheever. Yes, have warrants drawn for all these. No. Arrest for examination. Oh, yes. brought trouble on these no, people. No, old man, you have not hurt these people if they are of good conscience. But you must understand, sir, that a person is either with this court or he must be counted against it. There be no road between. This is a sharp time now, a precise time. We live no longer in the dusky afternoon when evil mixed itself with good and befuddled the world. Now, by God's grace, the shining sun is up and them that fear not light will surely praise it. I hope you will be none of those. Now, Mr. Proctor, yeah. what other information do you have for us? John, my deposition, give him mine. Aye, aye. This is Mr. Corey's deposition. Oh. What lawyer drew this, Corey? You know, I never hired a lawyer in my life, Hawthorne. It is very well phrased, my compliments. Hmm. Mr. Paris, if Mr. Putnam is in the court, will you bring him in? Very good, sir. You have no legal training, Mr. Corey. I have the best, sir. I am 23 times in court in my life and always plaintive, oh, too. Oh, then you are much put upon. I am never put upon. I know my rights, sir, and I will have them. You know, your father tried a case of mine. might be 35 years ago, I think. Indeed. He never spoke to you of it. No, I cannot recall it. That's that strange. He gave me nine pounds damages. He were a fair judge, your father. You see, I had a white mare that time, and this fellow come to borrow the mare. Mr. Putnam, sir, I very... Mr. Putnam? I have here an accusation by Mr. Corey against you. He states that you coldly prompted your daughter Ruth to cry witchery upon George Jacobs that is now in jail. It is a lie. Mr. Putnam states your charge is a lie. What say you to that? A fart on Thomas Putnam. That is what I say Corey, to that. Judge, proof do you submit for your charge? My sir? proof is there on the deposition. If Jacobs hangs for a witch, he forfeit up his property. That's law. Easy, and there is none but Putnam with the coin to buy so great a piece. This man is killing his neighbors for their land. But, oh, sir, I sir. have it from an honest man who heard Putnam say it. The day his daughter cried out on Jacobs, he said she's giving him a fair gift of land. And the name of this man? What name? The man that gave you this information. But, I... I I cannot give you his name. And why not? You know well why not. He'll lay in jail if I give you his name. This is contempt of the court, Mr. Danforth. You will Danford. tell us the name. No, I will not give you no name. I mentioned my wife's name once and I'll burn in hell long enough for that. I stand mute. In that case, I have no choice but to arrest you for contempt of this court. Do you know that? This is a hearing. You cannot clap me for contempt of a hearing. Oh, it is a proper lawyer. Do you wish me to declare the court in full session here, or will you give me a good reply? I cannot. I cannot, I, I cannot give you no name, sir. I cannot. You are a foolish old man. 
Mr. Chief, I begin the record. The court is now in session. But I ask Mr. Mr. Cole, Your Honor, he has the story in confidence, sir, and he can. The devil lives on such confidences. Without confidences, there could be no conspiracy, Your Honor. I think it must be broken, Old sir. Old man, if your informant tells the truth, let him come here openly like a decent man. But if he hide in anonymity, I must know why. Now, sir, the government and Central Church demand of you the name of him who reported Mr. Thomas Putnam a common Excellency. murderer. Excellency! Mr. Hale. We cannot think it more. There is a prodigious fear of this court in the country. Then there is a prodigious guilt in the country. Are you afraid to be questioned here? I... I may only fear the Lord, sir. But there is fear in the country, nevertheless. Touch me not with the fear in the country. There is fear in the country because there is a moving plot to topple Christ in the country. But it does not follow that everyone accused is part of it. No uncorrupted man may fear this court, Mr. Hale. None. Giles Corey... You are under arrest in this oh. court. Now sit you down and take counsel with yourself or you will be set in the jail until you decide to answer all questions. I'll cut your throat, Putnam. I'll kill peace, you. Peace, peace, Giles. Giles, peace. Giles. We'll prove ourselves. Now we will. Say nothing more, John. Governor Danforth means to hang us all. This is a court of law, mister. I'll have no effrontery here. Forgive him, sir. Forgive him for his old age. Peace, Giles. We'll prove it all now. You cannot weep, Mary. Remember the angel, what he say to the boy. Hold to it now. There is your rock. Uh, this is this is Mary Warren's deposition. And I would ask you to remember, sir, while you read it, that until two weeks ago, she were no different than the other children are today. You saw her scream. She howled. She swore familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of women now in jail, tried to win her soul away. And then when she this. refused, I, 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 she swears now that she never saw Satan nor any spirit vague or clear that Satan may have sent to hurt her. And she declares her friends are lying now. Excellency, Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart it of the matter. It surely does, Mr. Hale. I cannot say he is an honest man. I know him little. But in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, sir, stop here. Send him home. And let him come again with a lawyer. Now, look you, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I assign 72 death warrants. I am minister of the Lord. And I dare not take a life without there be a proof so immaculate... No slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. I'll not conceal it. My hand shakes yet as with a wound, I pray you, sir. This argument let lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, believe me, for a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. I hope you will forgive me. I have been 32 years at the bar, sir, and I should be confounded were I called upon to defend these people. Watch. Let you consider now, and I bid you all do likewise. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls up the witness to prove his innocence. But witchcraft is ipso facto on its face and by its nature an invisible crime, is it not? Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and the victim, none other. Now, we cannot hope the witch will accuse herself, grant it. Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and they do testify. The children certainly no, do there's... testify. As for witches, none will deny that we are most eager for their confessions. Therefore, what is left for a lawyer to bring out? I think I have made my point, have I not? But this child claims the girls are not truthful. I, that is precisely what I am about to consider, sir. What more may you ask of me, unless you doubt my property? I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it, then. And let you put your heart to rest. Her deposition, Mr. Potter. Here you are, sir. I should like to question... Mr. Paris, I bid you be silent. Mr. Cheever, will you go into the court and bring the children here? Yes, sir. Mary Warren, how come you to this turnabout... Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened you? No. Then you sir. tell me that you sat in my court callously lying. Answer me. I did. How were you instructed in your life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I am with God you now. You are with God now. Yes, sir. I will tell you this. You are either lying now or you were lying in the court, and in either case you have committed perjury and you will go to jail for it. You cannot lightly say you lied, Mary. Do you know that? Oh, I cannot lie no more. I'm with God. I am with God. Here are the girls, sir. Susanna Walcott, Mercy Lewis, Betty Paris, and Abigail Williams. 
Ruth Putnam is not in the court, sir, nor the other children. These but... will be sufficient. Sit you down, children. Your friend, Mary Warren, has given us a deposition in which she swears that she never saw familiar spirits, apparitions, nor any manifest of the devil. She claims as well that none of you have seen these things either. Now, children, this is a court of law. The law based upon the Bible and the Bible writ by Almighty God forbid the practice of witchcraft and describe death as the penalty thereof. But, likewise, children, the law and Bible damn all bearers of false witness. Now then, it does not escape me that this deposition may be devised to blind us. It may well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan, who sends her here to distract our sacred purpose... If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speak true, I bid you now drop your guile and confess your pretense, for a quick confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth in this? No, sir. But... Children, a very auger bit will now be turned into your souls until your honesty is proved. Will either of you change your positions now, or do you force me to hard questioning? I have not to change, sir. She lies. Oh, no. You would still go on with this, Mary Warren? Aye, sir. A poppet were discovered in Mr. Proctor's house, stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claims that you sat beside her in the court when she made it, and that you saw her make it and witnessed how she herself stuck her needle into it for safekeeping. What say you to that? It is a lie, sir. While you worked for Mr. Proctor, did you see poppets in that house? Goody Proctor always kept poppets. Your Honor, my wife never kept no poppets. Mary Warren confesses it were her poppet. Mr. Danforth, what profit this girl to turn herself about? What may Mary Warren gain but hard questioning and words? You are charging Abigail Williams with a marvellous cool plot to murder. Do you understand that? I do, sir. I believe she means to murder. This child would murder your it wife. It is not a child. Now hear me, sir. In the sight of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of the meeting house for laughter during What's prayer. What's this laughter during... Excellency, she were under Tichuba's power at that time, but she is solemn now. Aye, she is solemn and goes to hang... Quiet, man. Me. Surely it have no bearing in the question, sir. He charges contemplation of murder. I continue, Mr. Prop. Mary... Now, tell the governor how you danced in the woods. Excellency, since I come to Salem, this man is blackening my name. In a lady. moment, sir. What is this dancing? Uh, Mr. Proctor. Abigail leads the girls to the woods. Your Honor, they have danced their naked. Oh, Your Honor, this is... Mr. Paris discovered them himself in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Paris. I can only say, sir, that I never found any of them naked, and this but man is... But you discovered a... them dancing in the woods. Excellency... When I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny it, Mr. Paris? I do not, sir, but I never saw any of them naked. But she have danced. I, sir. Excellency, will you permit me? Pray proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary? Were never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents? And yet, when people accused of witchery confronted you in court, you would faint, saying their spirits came out of their bodies and choked you. No. Pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked you up many times and your skin were icy. Mr. Danforth, I you saw were... that many times. She only pretended to faint, Your Excellency. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can't she pretend to faint now? Why not? No. There are no spirits attacking her, for none in this room is accused of witchcraft. So let her turn herself cold now. Let her pretend she is attacked now. Let her faint. Faint. Aye, faint. Faint. Prove to us that you pretended in the court so many times. I cannot faint now, sir. Mary, can you not pretend I, it? I, oh, I, I have no sense of it Why, now, what is I, lacking now? I, I Might it be that sense. here we have no afflicting I, spirit loose, but in the court there I were some? I no spirits. Then see no spirits now and prove to us that you can faint by your own will, as you I, claim. I cannot do it. Oh, then you will confess, will you not? It were attacking spirits made you faint. No, sir, I... Oh, Your Excellency, this is a trick to blind the court. It's not a trick. I used to faint because I I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw them? But I did not, Your Honor. How could you think you saw them unless you saw them? I, I cannot tell how, but I did. I heard the other girls screaming. You, you, Your Honor, you seemed to believe them, and I... It were only spot in the beginning, sir, and then the whole world cried spirits, spirits, and I promise you, Mr. Danforth, I only thought I saw them, but I did not. Oh, I... Surely your excellency is not taken in by this simple lie. Abigail, I... 
I bid you now search your heart and tell me this, and beware of it, child. To God every soul is precious, and his vengeance is terrible on them that take life without cause. Is it possible, child, that the spirits you have seen are illusion only, some deception that may cross your mind? This is a base question, sir. Child, I would have you consider it. I have been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I have seen my blood running out. I have been near to murdered every day because I done my duty pointing out the devil's people. And this is my reward. To be mistrusted, child, denied, child, questioned like a let you beware, you. Mr. Danforth. Think you to be so mighty that the power of hell may not turn your wits. Beware of it. There is What is it, child? I what is not it? a wind, a cold wind Abby, is come. Carolina, I free They're pretending. She is cold, Your Honor. Touch her. Mary, do you send the shadow? God save me. I freeze. I freeze. There's a wind. Oh, Abby, Lord. Abby, don't... Mary Warren, do you witch her? I say to you, do you send your spirit out? Let, let me go, Mr. I cannot. I, I cannot. Oh, Heavenly Father, take oh, away the shadow. Oh, how do you call heaven? Whore? Whore? Man, man, what do you... It is a whore. You charge. Mr. Danforth, he is lying. Mark her. Now you, she'll suck you a screen to stab me with. This will not pass. I have known her, sir. <sighs> I have known her. God, John. You. You are a lecher. John, you cannot say oh, such Francis, things. Francis, Francis, I wish you could have some evil in you that you might know me. A man will not cast away his good name. You surely know that. In, in what time? In what place? In the proper place. Where my beasts are bedded. On the last night of my joy, some eight months past, she used to serve me in the house, sir. A man may think God sleeps, but God sees everything. I know it now. I beg you, sir, I beg you. See her what she is. My wife, my dear good wife, took this girl soon after, sir, and put her out on the high road. And being what she is, a lump of vanity, sir. Excellency, forgive me, forgive me. She... She thinks to dance with me on my wife's grave, and well she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lusted. And there is a promise in such sweat, but it is a whore's vengeance, and you must see it. I set myself entirely in your hands. I know you must see it now. Abigail Williams. You deny every scrap and tittle of this. If I must answer that, I will leave and I will not come back again. I have made a bell of my honor. I have rung the doom of my good name. You will believe me, Mr. Danforth. My wife is innocent. Mr. Paris, go into the court and bring good wife Proctor out. Your honor, this is all... Bring her out and tell her not one word of what's been spoken here. And let you knock before you enter. Now we shall touch the bottom of this swamp. Your wife, you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she have never lied. There are them that cannot sing and them that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. I have paid much to learn it, sir. And when she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a harlot. Aye, sir. And knew her for a harlot. Aye, sir, she knew her for a harlot. Then, and if she tell me, Abigail, it was a harlotry, may God spread his mercy on you. Hold! Turn your backs, both of you. Now let neither of you turn to face Goody Proctor. No one in this room is to speak a word or raise a gesture, I or nay. Enter. <clears throat> Mr. Chiva, report this testimony in all exactness. Yes, sir. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Come here, woman. Look at me only, not at your husband. In my eyes only. Good, sir. We are given to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Williams. That is true, sir. For what cause did you dismiss her? Why did you dismiss Abigail Williams? Well, she uh, dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She was... Woman, look at me. Was she slovenly lazy? What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I... In that time I were sick, and I... My husband is a good and righteous man. He is never drunk, a summer hour, nor wasting his time at the shovel board, but always at his work. But in my sickness, you see... Sir, I were a long time sick after my last baby. 
and I thought I saw my husband somewhat turning from me. I and this girl. Look at me. Yes, sir. Abigail Williams. What is Abigail Williams? I came to think he fancied her, and so one night I lost my wits, I think, and put her out on the high road. Your husband did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man. Then sir. he did not turn from you. Look at me. He... To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of lechery? <sighs> Answer my question. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. Remove her, Marshal. Elizabeth! She has spoken. Remove her. Tell the truth. Elizabeth, I have confessed it. Oh, God. She only thought to save my name. Excellency, it is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop now before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it no more. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man has struck me true by my oath to heaven. I believe him now. And I she pray you, call back his wife. And this man has lied. I believe him. This girl has always struck me false. She was always... What is it, child? Why are you looking up at the ceiling? Because I say... Child. Child. Girl. Why do you... It's on the beam. Behind Where? Why? Why do you come here, bird? Where's the bird? I see no bird. My face. My face. Mr. Hale. Quiet. Mr. Hale, do you see a bird? But God made my face. You cannot want to tear my face. Envy is a deadly sin, Mary. Oh, Mary, this is a black art to change your shape. No, I cannot. I cannot stop my mouth. It's God's work. I do. Happy Mr. Young, oh, please, Mary, don't be dark. Oh, she's stretching her claws. Lies, lies. Mary, please don't hurt me. Hurting Why her. does she see this vision? She sees nothing. She sees nothing. Happy, you mustn't. Happy, you mustn't. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Mary, why don't you let your spirit out of them? Mr. Danforth. Mr. Danforth. Have you compacted with the devil, have you? Never, never. Never, never. Why can they only repeat you? Give me a whip. I'll stop it. There's parting. There's no, no, Tommy. Stop it. 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 Stop God damns all liars. You have seen the devil. You have compacted with Lucifer. God damns liars, Mary. I cannot hear you. What do you say? You will confess yourself or you will hang. Mary. Do you know who I am? I say you will hang if you do not open with me. Mary, Mary, remember the angel, Raphael. Do that which is good. Wings, the wings are spreading. Mary, please don't. I don't. see nothing, Your Honor. Do you confess this power? Speak. She's going to come down. Do you She's speak? Going to I cannot. We'll cast the devil out, look him in the face, trample him, and we'll save you, Mary. Only stand fast against him. And... Oh, she's coming down! Mary! 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 Mary. Mary. <laughs> Tell the governor what they... Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Mary! I'm not dead as a devil! Mary! You're the devil's man! Mary! Don't praise God! What's wrong with you? I he bid you do I'm the devil's God. work. You have to come at me by night and every day to sign. To sign. sign what? The devil's work? My you name, come with a book? He worried my name. Yeah. I'm already yours, says. If my wife hangs, we must go on over for the court, he says. He wake me every night. His eyes are like coals and his fingers' claws are on my neck. And I sign. Excellency, this child's gone wild. Mary, Mary! No, I love God. I go your way no more. I love God. I love God. Abby, I never heard you. you, Proctor? You are combined. With Antichrist, are you not? I have seen your power. You will not deny it. What say you, Mr. Hassel? I will have nothing from you, Mr. Hale. Will you confess yourself befouled with hell? Or do you keep that black allegiance yet? What say you? I, I say, I say, God is dead. Oh, hear it, hear it! A fire! A fire is burning. I hear the boot of Lucifer. I see his filthy face. And it is my face and yours, Danforth, for them that quail to bring men out of their ignorance. At least I have quailed. And as you quail, now when you know in all your black heart that this be fraud. God damns our kind especially and we will burn. We will Marshall, burn together. Take him and Corey with him to the jail. I denounce these proceedings. You are pulling heaven down and raising up a whore. I quit this court. Mr. Hale. I quit this Mr. court. Mr. Hale. Goody good, sentenced to hang. Tituba, sentenced to hang. Bridget Bishop, sentenced to hang. Goody Osborne, sentenced to hang. Goody Bibber, sentenced to hang. Goody Booth, sentenced to hang. Isaac Ward, sentenced to hang. Devil, take me home. Devil, take me home. <clears throat> if 
Come on in, Excellency. Judge Athol, Mr. Chief. Mr. Paris asked to see us. Where is he? I'll fetch him. Marshal Herrick, when did Reverend Hale arrive? It was toward midnight, I think. What is he about here? He goes among them that will hang, sir. And he prays with them. He sits with Goody Nurse now. And Mr. Paris with him. Indeed. That man have no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why have you let him in? Why, Mr. Paris, command me, sir. I cannot deny him. Are you drunk, Marshal? No, sir. It is a bitter night, and I have no fire here. Fetch Mr. Paris. Aye, sir. There is a prodigious stench in the cell. I have only now cleared the prisoners out for you. What prisoners? Tituba and Sarah Good. Mm. Beware hard drink, Marshal. Aye, sir. Let you question Hale, Excellency. I should not be surprised he have been preaching in Andover lately. We'll come to that, Hathorn. Speak nothing of Andover. <sighs> Paris prays with him. That's strange. Excellency, I wonder if it'd be wise to let Mr. Paris so continuously with the prisoners. I think sometimes the man has a mad look these days. Mad? I met him yesterday morning coming out of his house, and I bid him good morning. And he wept and went his way. I think it is not well that the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he has some sorrow. I think it be the cows. Cows, Mr. Cheva. There be so many cows wandering the high roads now that the masters are in the jails. And much disagreement as to who they will belong to now. I know Mr. Paris be arguing with farmers all yesterday. There is great contention, sir, about the cows. And contention make him weep, sir. It were always a man that weep for contention. Oh, good morning, sir. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon waking you so early. Good morning, Judge. Reverend Hale have no right to enter this prison. You leave him alone with the prisoners? What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. It's a providence. Reverend Hale has returned to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess. Hear me. Rebecca have not given me a word this three months since she came. Now she sits with him and her sister and Martha Corey and two or three others, and he pleads with them, confess their crimes Why, and save their lives. This is indeed a providence, Why? and they soften, they soften. Well, not yet, not yet. But I thought to summon you, sir, that we might not think on whether it be not wise to... Um... I thought to put a question, sir, and I hope you will Mr. not... Mr. Paris, be plain. What troubled you? There is news, sir, that the court, the court must reckon with... My niece, sir, my niece, I... I believe she's vanished. Vanished? Oh, I'd thought to advise you what earlier... Why, how long has she been gone? This be the third night. She and Mercy Lewis are both gone. I will send a party for them. Where may they be? Excellency, I think they be aboard a ship. A ship? Mm -hmm. My daughter tells me how she heard them speaking of ships last week, and tonight I discover my... my strong box is broken into. She have robbed you. Thirty-one pound is gone. I'm penniless. <laughs> Mr. Paris, you are a brainless man. Excellency, it profit nothing you should blame me. I cannot think they would run up, except they fear to keep in Salem any more. Ah. Mark it, sir. Abigail had close knowledge of the town, and since the news of Andover has broken... Andover has remedied. The court returns there on Friday and will resume examination. I'm sure of it, sir, but the rumor here speaks rebellion there in Andover. There is no rebellion in Andover. I tell you what is spoken here, sir. Andover have thrown out the court, they say, and will have no part of witchcraft. There be a faction here feeding on that news. And I tell you true, sir, I fear there will be a riot here. Riots, White, every execution I have seen not but high satisfaction Judge in the town. Hathorn, it were another sort that hang till now. Rebecca nurses no Bridget that lived three years with Bishop before she married him. John Proctor is not Isaac Ward that drank his family to ruin. I would to God it were not so, Excellency, that be these people have great weight yet in the town. Let Rebecca stand upon the gibbet and send up some righteous prayer, and I fear she'll wake a vengeance on Excellency, you. Excellency, she's a condemned witch. Pray the you... court of... How do you propose that, Mr. Paris? Excellency, I would postpone these hangings there for a while. There will be no postponement. Now Mr. Hale has returned, there is hope, I think. For if he bring even one of these to God, that confession surely damns the others in the public eye, and none may doubt any more that they're all linked to hell. This way, unconfessed and claiming innocence, doubts are multiplied, and honest people will weep for them, and our good purpose is lost in their tears. Oh, it cannot be forgot, sir, that when I... When I summoned the congregation for John Proctor's excommunication, there were hardly 30 people come to hear it. Now, that, that speaker discontent, there will be no I think, postponement. Now, sir, which of the condemned, in your opinion, may be brought to God? I will myself strive with him till dawn. There is not sufficient time till dawn. I shall do my utmost. Which of them do you have hope for? Excellency, a dagger. What do you say? Tonight, when I open my door to leave my house... 
A dagger clattered to the ground. Oh. You cannot hang this sword. There is danger for me. I dare not step out at night. Uh, Reverend Hale, sir. I accept my congratulations, Reverend Hale. We are gladdened to see you, you return pardon to them. your they good will not work. Budge. You misunderstand me, sir. I cannot pardon these when twelve are already hanged for the same crime. It is not just. Rebecca will Sun not will confess. rise in a few minutes. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Yes. Them that will not confess will hang. Judge twelve are already executed. The names of these seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die this morning. <laughs> postponement now speaks a floundering on my part. Reprieve or pardon must cast doubt upon the guilt of them that died till now. While I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. If retaliation is your fear, know this. I should hang 10,000 that dared to rise against the law, and an ocean of salt tears could not melt the resolution of the statutes. Now, draw yourselves up like men and help me as you are bound by heaven to do. Have you spoken with them all, Mr. Hale? All. All but Proctor. He is in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now, Marshal? He sits like some great bird. You do not know he lived, except he will take food from time to time. His wife. His wife must be well on with child now. She is, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. Pallas, sir. You have a closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It is possible, sir. He have not laid eyes on her these three months. I should summon her. Is she yet adamant? Has he struck at you again, Marshal? He cannot, sir. He is chained to the wall. <laughs> Fetch Goody Proctor to me. Then let you bring him up. Excellency. Aye, Excellency, if you postpone a week and publish to the town that you are striving for their confessions, that speak mercy on your part, Mr. not for Hale, as God have not empowered me like Joshua to stop this sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God wills you to raise rebellion, Mr. Danforth, you are mistaken. You have heard rebellion spoken in the town. Excellency, there are orphans wandering from house to house. Abandoned cattle bellow on the high roads. The stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere. And no man knows when the harlot's cry will end his life. And you wonder yet if rebellion spoke. Better yet, you should marvel how they do not burn your province. Mr. Hale, have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need of me in Andover. You baffle me, sir. Why have you returned here? <laughs> Why, it is all so simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel Christians. They should belie themselves. There is blood on my head. Can you not see the blood on my head, Mr. Hale? Shh, shh, hush. <clears throat> Remove her chains, Marshal. Aye, sir. Goody Proctor. I hope you are hearty. I, I am yet six months before my time. Pray you be at your ease. We come not for your life. We... <sighs> Mr. Hare, will you speak with the woman? Goody Proctor. Your husband is marked to hang this morning. I have heard it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with the court? I come of my own, Goody Proctor... I would save your husband's life, for if he is taken, I count myself his murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want of me? Goody Proctor, I have gone this three months like our Lord into the wilderness. I have sought a Christian way, for damnation's doubled on a minister who counsels men to lie. It is no lie. It is a lie. They are in a streak of lies. Let you not mistake your duty, as I mistook my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved, bearing gifts of high religion, the very crowns of holy law I brought. And what I touched with my bright confidence, it died. And where I turned the eye of my great faith, blood flowed up. Beware, Goody Proctor. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. It is mistaken law that leads you to sacrifice. Life, woman, life is God's most precious gift. No principle, however glorious, may justify the taking of it. 
I beg you, woman, prevail upon your husband to confess. Let him give his lie. Quail not before God's judgment in this, for it may well be God damns a liar less than he that throws his life away for pride. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. I think this be the devil's argument. Woman, before the laws of God, we are a swine. We cannot read his will. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I lack learn and art. Doctor, you are not summoned here for disputation. Be there no wifely tenderness within you. He will die with the sunrise. Your husband. Do you understand it? What say you? Will you contend with him? Are you stone? I tell you true, woman, had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence that you delivered up your soul to hell. A very ape would weep for such calamity. Have the devil dried up every tear of pity in you? Take her out. It profit nothing she should speak to him. Let me speak with him, Excellency. Oh, you'll strive will with you him. plead with him? Will you plead for his confession or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. John Parker, Your Excellency. Pray, leave them, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? I see light in the sky, mister. Let you counsel with your wife, and may God help you turn your back on hell. Come, gentlemen. Uh, if you would like a cup of cider, Mr. Proctor, I'm... I'm sorry. The child. It grows. There is no word of the boys. Oh, they will. Rebecca Samuel keeps them. You have not seen them? No, I have not. You are... You are a marvel, Elizabeth. You have been tortured. I... They come for my life now. I know it. None have yet confessed. Oh, there be many confessed. Who are they? There be a hundred or more, they say. Goody Ballard is one. He say a good kind is one. There be many. Rebecca? Not Rebecca. She's one foot in heaven now. Naught can hurt her more. And Giles? You've not heard it. I hear nothing where I am kept. Giles is dead. Dead? Oh. When were he hanged? Oh, he were not hanged. He would not answer I or nay to his indictment, for if he denied the charge, they'd hang him surely and auction out his property. So he stand mute and died Christian under the law. And so his sons will have his farm. It is the law. For he could not be condemned and wizard without the answer to the indictment, I or nay. Then how does he die? Oh, they press him, John. Press? Great stones they lay upon his chest until he plead, I or nay. They say he give them but two words. Huh. More weight, he says, and died. More weight? <laughs> What a fearsome man, Giles Gore. Yeah. I have been thinking that I would confess to them. Elizabeth, what say you? What say you if I give them that? I cannot judge you, John. What would you have me do? As you will, I would have it. I want you living, John, that's sure. Uh, Giles' wife, have she confessed? Oh, she will not. It is a pretense, Elizabeth. What is I cannot mount the gibbet like a saint. It is a fraud. I am not that man. My honesty is broke, Elizabeth. I am no good man. Oh, John. Nothing spoiled by giving in this lie that were not rotten long before. And yet you've not confessed till now. That speak goodness in you. Spite only keeps me silent. It is hard to give a lie to dogs. I would have your forgiveness, Elizabeth. It is not for me to give, John. John I'd have you see some honesty in it. 
Let them that never lie die now to keep their souls. It is pretense for me. A vanity that will not blind God nor keep my children out of the wind. What say you? John, come to naught that I should forgive you if you will not forgive yourself. It is not my soul, John. It is yours. Only be sure of this, for I know it now. Whatever you will do, it is a good man, doesn't it? Yeah. I have read my heart this three months, John. I have sins of my own to count. It needs a cold wife to prompt lechery. Enough, enough! Oh, better, you should I will not it. hear it. I know you, you. take my sins upon you, John. No, I take my own. My John. own! John, I counted myself so plain, so, so poorly made. No honest love could come to me. Suspicion kissed you when I did. I never knew how I should say my love. It were a cold house I kept. What say you, Proctor? The sun is soon up. Do what you will, John. But let none be your judge. Let me no higher judge under heaven than Proctor is. Forgive me. Forgive me, John. I never knew such goodness in the world. <laughs> I want my life. You can pass yourself. I will have my life. God be praised. It is a providence. You will confess. But why do you cry it? It is evil. Is it not, Elizabeth? It is evil. I cannot judge you, John. I cannot. Then who will judge me? God in heaven, what is John Proctor? What is John Proctor? I think it is honest. I think so. I am no saint. Let Rebecca go like a saint. For me, it is fraud. I am not your judge. It cannot be. Do as you will. Would you? As you will. Elizabeth, would you give them such a lie? Say it. Would you ever give them this? John. You would not. If tongues of fire were singing you, you would not. It is evil. Good that it is evil, and I do it. Praise the God. We shall be blessed in heaven for this. Now then, let us have it. Are you ready, Mr. Cheever? I have ink, paper, and pen. Why must it be written? Why, the good instruction of the village, mister. This we shall post upon the church door. Now then, mister, will you speak slowly and directly to the point for Mr. Cheever's sake? Mr. Proctor, have you seen the devil in your life? Come, man, there is light in the sky. The town waits at the scaffold. I would give out this news. Did you see the devil? I did. And when he come to you, what were his demand? Did he bid you do his work upon the earth? He did. And you bound yourself to his service? Rebecca Nurse, Your Excellency. Come in, come in, woman. Ah, John. You are well, then. Let you witness this man's good example that you may come to God yourself. Now hear it, goody nurse. Say on, Mr. Proctor. Did you bind yourself to the devil's service? Why, John. I did. Now, woman, you surely see it profit nothing to keep this conspiracy any further. Will you confess yourself with him? John, God send his mercy on you. I say, will you confess yourself, goody nurse? Why, it's a lie. It's a lie. How may I damn myself? I cannot, I cannot. Mr. Proctor, when the devil came to you, did you see Rebecca Nurse in his company? Come, man. Take courage. Did you ever see her with the devil? No. Did you ever see her sister Mary Eastie with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see Martha Corey with the devil? No, I did not. Did you ever see anyone with the devil? I did not. Doctor, you mistake me. I am not empowered to trade your life for a lie. You have most certainly seen some person with the devil. Mr. Proctor, a score of people have already testified they saw Goody Nurse with the devil. Then it is proved. Why must I say it? Why must you say it? Why, you should rejoice to say it if your soul is truly purged of any love for hell. They think to go like saints. I'd like not to spoil their names. Mr. Proctor, do you think they go like saints? This woman never thought she'd done the devil's work. Look, you, sir, I think you mistake your duty here. It matters nothing what she thought. She is convicted of the unnatural murder of children and you for sending your spirit out upon Mary Warren. Your soul alone is the issue here, mister, and you will prove its whiteness or you cannot live in a Christian country. Will you tell me what persons conspired with you in the devil's company? 
to your knowledge was Rebecca Nurse I speak ever... my own sins. I cannot judge another. I have no tongue for it. Excellency, it is enough. He confess himself. Let him sign it. Let him sign it. It is a great service, sir. It is a weighty name. It will strike the village that Proctor confess. I beg you, let him sign it. The sun is up, Excellency. Come, Ned, sign your testimony. Give it to him, Mr. Cheever. Come, man, sign it. You have all witnessed it. It is enough. You will not sign You it. have all witnessed it. What more is needed? Do you sport with me? You will sign your name or it is no confession, mister. <laughs> oh, praise be to the Lord. He has signed. <laughs> the paper, if you please, sir. No. Mr. Proctor, I must have... No, no, I have signed it. You have seen me. It is done. You have no need for this. Proctor, the village must have... Down the village. I confess to God, and God has seen my name on this. It is enough. No, sir, it is not... You came to save my soul, did you not? Here, I have confessed myself. It is enough. I have confessed myself. Is there no good penitence but it be public? God does not need my name nailed upon the church. God sees my name, and God knows how black my sins are. It is enough. You will not use me. I am no Sarah Good or Tichaba. I am John Proctor. You will not use me. It is no part of salvation that you should use me. I do me. not wish to use you, Mr. I Proctor. have three children. <laughs> How may I teach them to walk like men in the world? And I sold my friends. You have not sold your feet. Begar me not. I blacken all of them when this is nailed to the church the very day they hang for silence. Mr. Proctor, I must have good and legal proof. You are the you. high court. Your word is good enough. Tell them I confess myself. Say Proctor broke his knees and wept like a woman. Say what you will, but my name cannot... It is the same, is it not, if I report it no, for you sign? No, it is not the same. What others say and what I sign to is not the same. Why, do you mean to deny this confession when you are free? I mean to deny nothing. Then explain to me, Mr. Proctor, why you will not because let me... Because it is my name! Because I cannot have another in my life! Because I lie and sign myself to lies! Because I am not worth the dust on the feet of them that hang. How may I live without my name? I have given you my soul. Leave me my name. Is that document in your hand a lie? If it is a lie, I will not accept it. What say you? I will not deal in lies, mister. You will give me your honest confession in my hand, or I cannot keep you from the rope. Which way do you go, mister? Proctor! Oh, you cannot! I can. And there is your first marvel that I can. You have made your magic now, for I do think I see some shred of goodness in John Proctor. Not enough to weave a banner with, but white enough to keep it from such dogs. <laughs> Give them no tears, Elizabeth. Tears pleasure them. Show honor now. Show a stony heart and sink them with it. Let you fear nothing, Elizabeth. Another judgment waits us all. Take Goody Nurse and Proctor Marshal. Hang them high over the town. Who weeps for these, weeps for corruption. I've had no breakfast, John. <laughs> Give me your hand, Rebecca. Lean on me. <laughs> come, man. Rebecca, come. Go to him, Goody Proctor. There is yet time. to him. Declare his truth. Go to him. Take his shame away. He have his goodness now. God forbid I take it from him. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shortly after John Proctor was hanged, the Reverend Paris walked out of Salem and was never heard of again. Four years later, Elizabeth Proctor remarried, and legend has it that Abigail Williams turned to prostitution. Twenty years after the last hanging, the government awarded compensation to the victims still living and to the families of the dead. However, some people were still unwilling to admit their total guilt. The town was still divided into factions, for some of those compensated by the government were not victims at all, but informers. The cast in this production was, in order of appearance, Reverend Paris, Michael York, Tituba, Judy Ann Elder, Abigail Williams, Madeline Smith, Susanna Walcott, Anne Hearn, Anne Putnam, Marion Mercer, Thomas Putnam, Ed Begley Jr., Mercy Lewis, Irina Ranga, Mary Warren, Carol Kane, Betty Paris, Anna Sophie Lowenberg, John Proctor, Stacy Keach, Giles Corey, Hector Elizondo, Rebecca Nurse, Georgia Brown, Reverend Hale, Richard Dreyfus, Elizabeth Proctor, Fanula Flanagan, Francis Nurse, Joe Spano, Deputy Governor Danforth, Rene Aubergenois, Judge Hathorne, Franklin Seals, Herrick, Jack Coleman. L.A. Classic Theatre Works, Susan Albert Lowenberg and Judith Aubergenois, co-producers. Los Angeles coordinator was John McNally, assisted by Sylvia Kalmans. The technical director, Steve Barker. Recording facilities provided by BBAT Productions. The recording engineer, Jeff Sykes. Editing and mixing, Tom Strother. Stage management, Richard Eisner. Spot effects, Eric Myers. Production associate, Jacqueline Delorier. The producers were Martin Jenkins and Jerry Jones. And The Crucible was directed by Martin Jenkins. The production was recorded at the Culver Studios in Culver City, California. 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 California.